Understanding financial accounting, accounting entries, debits, and credits. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and phone number here. Uh, videos three and four are an extension, a continuation from understanding income statements that was financial accounting number two on YouTube, and we use the principles of accounting book. Just as a review, I'm going to put these up on the screen. Remember that debits are always on the left-hand side, regardless of type of account. Left side is positive. Debt, a credit is always on the right-hand side, regardless of the type of account. Right is negative. And a normal or positive account balance depends on what kind of account it is. An asset account has a debit left side balance normally, which means a positive balance for cash. An asset account is a debit. A liability or equity account has a credit or right side balance. Accounts payable, which is a liability account, has a credit balance. I want to flip back to Excel and go to the discussion that we were having previously. Again, here is our T account with cash, debit and credit. A normal balance is a debit balance on the left. <clears throat> we have a credit balance on the right. We have a beginning balance that's positive, a debit. We have debit and credit activity in the middle. And we have an ending balance, $6,000, that is a debit, a normal balance for cash. An asset account is a debit. <clears throat> on our last video, we showed you five accounting entries. We explained what was happening, the accounts were, and the debit and credit. And now I want to put these transactions into a T account. Let's look at number one. Claire invests $50,000 in the business. Cash goes up $50,000. Capital goes up $50,000. Here it is in T account form. We have a T for each account. We have the account title at the top. I have the five transactions explained at the bottom. And then I have a number and an amount, debit and credit for each transaction. Here's what I mean. Look at one invest cash at the bottom where Claire invests cash in her business. If you go to the cash T account, one debit 50,000 increases cash. In the capital account next to it, one credit 50,000 for capital. So we have a balance. We have a debit and a credit of $50,000. Claire wants to buy ovens to use in her business. So you'll see in number two, fixed assets go up $10,000 debit. It's an asset account. And you'll see a two under cash, a credit, meaning that cash went down $10,000. So we have a 10,000 debit, 10,000 credit for transaction two. It balances. Number three, she's a caterer. She makes food, so she buys food ingredients. We consider food inventory. So if you look at the inventory T account, Three twenty-five thousand dollar debit, the asset account goes up. And in cash, three twenty-five thousand dollars credit, asset account goes down. Number four, we have a sale. We sell some food to a customer who doesn't pay us anything yet. We have an account receivable, they owe us money, that's an asset. Twenty thousand dollars number four debit, an asset account to increase it. We had a sale, and this is what it brings us to retained earnings. With retained earnings, put simply, we'll explain more later, the revenue goes on the right as a credit. Your expenses like cost of sales go on the left as a debit, and they're going to balance each other out and come up with a profit. So for number four, $20,000 credit for revenue is where we put the revenue. So we have a number four debit accounts receivable, credit revenue retained earnings, that entry balances. And finally, since we sold that food, we had a difference between what we sold it for revenue and what it costs us, which is cost of sales. Number five, recognize cost of sales. That expense is a debit and retained earnings. And since we used up some of the food we bought, our inventory goes down by 15,000. So five, debit, retained earnings, 15,000. Five credit or reduce inventory fifteen thousand. The last step that I didn't put here was 
if we were to have an ending balance, I'm going to put ending and make it a little bigger. If we were to do that, and I'll use the cursor here, we would have $20,000 revenue less the $15,000 expense. We'd have a $5,000 profit. And in fact, we're going to see that on a later slide. That $5,000 is our net income, our profit. You can state it either way. And we're going to see that in the financials later on. Now you can see that we could go back to the T account and find out that we could have an ending balance for all of these accounts. Those ending balances are going to be found on the balance sheet. So if you look at the T account activity and come up with an ending balance, all those ending balances are going to end up here on the balance sheet. For example, you'll see there's the retained earnings that has a net balance of $5,000, the $20,000 revenue less the $15,000 cost of sales. So all those T account ending balances are going to end up on the balance sheet. That's the end of part four. You'll find part five on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. If you'd like to register for live tutoring or chat sessions, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.